So uh, from an uh, incredibly large porphyry, uh, relatively low grade, but incredibly large, to uh, something that's quite large and extremely high grade, uh, Kinantu Gold Mine and Project. We're uh, back where the, uh, the uh, previous speaker started almost, next to the Solomon Islands and PNG. Uh, the usual forward-looking statement, which you're all going to fill in a form to say you've read it when you leave. So K92 Mining, we're TSX fee listed company. Uh, we operate the uh, high-grade K92 mine in Papua New Guinea. Average grade of plus 12 gram per ton gold equivalent. Uh, current resource, half a million ounces of measured and indicated, and another two and a half million ounces of inferred resource. Current production rate, around the 50,000 ounces per annum. Q2, we produce 10,500 ounces of uh, gold, 128,000 pounds of copper. And our costs, $590 an ounce uh, cash cost and all in sustaining cost of under 800. Short term growth, we're looking to double our throughput to um, 400,000 tons per annum, which will produce somewhere between 110 and 130,000 ounces a year, and obviously bring down our, both our cash costs and all in sustaining costs and starting that, uh, that expansion early in the new year. Um, in addition to that, we've got, uh, we've got a further update of the Cora North resource uh, due out by the end of this month, so this week, which is a target of a plus a million ounces um, from the 900,000 currently at. Medium term growth, we've got two rigs drilling underground currently. We've got a third rig uh, due to start before the end of the year. And the target for us is five million ounces by mid next year. All of it relatively high grade in the 12 to 15 grams per ton. And a feasibility study on the expansion into that project by the end of next year. In addition to which we've got a substantial land package around the mine, uh, approximately 12 or 13 porphyry uh, targets, in addition to a number of high grade veins which have uh, several million ounces of historical uh, resources. So where are we? PNG. We're actually in the Markham Valley, so unlike many of the mines in PNG, we're neither on an island nor are we up in the highlands. We're actually uh, in the largest valley in PNG, in the Markham Valley, which uh, gives us several advantages in terms of access and infrastructure. We've got a sealed all-weather road coming up from late, 200 kilometers away. Um, we've got an airstrip, which is uh, just next to the road where we join it, uh, which can take up the Dash 8 aircraft. Um, very large offices on site. Um, all the plant, mine, and general workshops, warehouses that you'd expect. Power, we're on the grid. So we have a uh, grid power, 22 kV line coming from PNG Power from the uh, hydroelectric although we also have complete installed standby power as well. So we acquired the, uh, the mine and surrounding exploration ground from Barrick in 2015. And at the time that we acquired it, it had uh, approximately 2 million ounces of resource, 400,000 ounces at Aruma Fimpa, 1.6 million ounces at, uh, at Cora. And as you can see, relatively high grade most of it sitting around the, uh, around the 12 grams per ton. So we've, uh, we've started drilling in uh, Cora North, which was in the northern extension of Cora, um, around mid last year. And in a period of approximately nine months, we increased the resource, the known resource there by approximately 900,000 ounces at Cora North, so nine months 900,000 ounces, of which 320,000 were measured and indicated. So, very brief history of the Kenantu mine discovery in uh, 1992. Um, feasibility study was completed by Highland Pacific in 2003, and then they constructed the, uh, the operation. They commissioned and, and ramped up in 2006, 2007. They sold the operation to Barrick for $141.5 million. Um, 2008, Barrick put the operation on care and maintenance, and we acquired the project, or the mine, and the surrounding exploration area from Barrick in 2015 
for, uh, for just a little bit under 141.5 million, uh, about 2 million. So what we're looking at basically is a long section here of the underground, um, where the, the red and blue is, is the Aruma Fimpa ore body, which was the initial ore body that the mine was started on. And then we have the Cora ore body uh, sitting off further to the south and about a 500 meter gap between Aruma Fimpa and, uh, and Cora. And our, our premise or, or uh, the way that we looked at the ore body was that we felt that the Cora ore body would extend uh, all the way almost to the Aruma Fimpa ore body, approximately 500 meters. So we, uh, we undertook initial underground drilling mid last year, which was the KMDD 009, 0009 which intersected the core ore body, the, the K2 vein as we call it, 5.4 meters, 11.7 grams per ton, uh, 25 gram per ton silver and 1.3% copper. Clearly the core ore body, not the Aruma Fimpa ore body. Aruma Fimpa has basically no copper and the veins tend to be one to two meters wide. So this was uh, really confirmed our view that, uh, that the core ore body did in fact continue to the south, uh, to the north, sorry. And therefore, we started off uh, developing into that area middle of last year. So having started to develop in middle of last year, in October last year, we took our first bulk sample from the K2, put it through our uh, existing processing plant, and got recoveries in excess of 91, 92% for both gold and copper. Put in, uh, started putting in a series of drill cutties, and to date we've uh, drilled out a resource, which you can see there, the, Cora, the North Cora resource, which is 900,000 ounces, as, uh, as I mentioned. So it's sitting basically in, bef in between Aruma Fimpa and Cora, and we uh, believe that ultimately these, uh, these two ore bodies will connect into one single ore body. So great control, basically we've been drilling out uh, a lot of that resource on a 25 by 25 pattern, so effectively carrying out grade control drilling while we're at the same time defining a resource. As you can see, we've uh, now, now uh, developed four diamond drill cutties, and as we've moved to the south, we found that, in fact, the, uh, the K1 load, which we had intersected in the first drill hole, but relatively low grade, three grams per tonne, uh, within about five meters of our first cross cut, that uh, ore body kicked up to around the 20 grams per ton. And to date, um, over about a 300 meter strike length has averaged uh, approximately 20 grams per ton over three meters. The K2 ore body around seven grams per ton and about 1% copper over 200 meters. So we basically drilled them out uh, almost 400, over 400 meters going south and found extremely good continuity in both the K1 and K2 ore bodies as we've continued to drill. So the resource that you saw there, almost 100 holes drilled into that to define that resource. So basically 320,000 ounces of measured and indicated, 570,000 ounces of inferred, and that's added to the Cora resource that was already sitting there of 1.6 million ounces. So now approximately 2.5 million ounces in Cora, and that is where the focus of all of our mining operations are now. So we've moved away from Aruma Fimpa entirely and moved into mining Cora. As we know, underground drilling is incredibly expensive, and as a result, our discovery costs are incredibly high at approximately a dollar an ounce against an industry average of about $45 per ounce. So. Um, uh, very expensive uh, ounces, but uh, worthwhile discovering. Um, a lot of detail there. What that was really uh, intended to show is the continuity that we have of both K1 and K2. This is all of the holes that we drilled from DDC3. And it's not a selection of here are some high-grade holes or here are the holes that have hit the ore bodies. This is actually every single one that we drilled. Every single one has actually picked up both of the ore bodies and uh, what it's shown us is that K2 in this area averages over 10 grams per ton and uh, about 2.5% copper. K1 
averaging something in the order of over 20 grams per ton. And uh, in one of these holes, uh, which was KMDD0084, actually recorded the uh, highest gram meter intersection on the TSX this year, which was uh, 5.8 meters at 487 grams per ton, including a, a section at 3,000, which, uh, which we have at the booth if you want to see some free gold. We don't charge you to see it, hence it's free. Uh, that's some of the exploration. So we've been doing longer holes from underground as well to extend our resource and again picking up both uh, K1 and K2. And this is very much the development that we've, uh, that we've been doing. So we're, we're actually developing a new mine underground. So we've got a single access initially off from underground. We're developing multiple accesses now. Um, starting off on, on one level, 1185, we've now accessed in the level below that and the level above that. So we've uh, over a over a period of uh, of the last 12 months we've effectively gone from accessing the ore body getting our first development into the ore body to actually having a, a an operating mine over three levels and during the time that we've been doing this we've been mining only this ore body and the Kenantu mine which up until we took it over had actually never made a positive cash flow never made any money has actually made positive cash flow and positive uh, and uh, profit for every quarter this year. The plant, uh, relatively simple. We have a flotation plant. We produce a uh, gold copper concentrate. Um, so we basically got two stages of crushing, uh, ball milling, a float circuit with flash float, roughers, cleaners, recleaners, producing a final concentrate, originally supposed to be around 200 grams per ton. With the material we're treating at core at present, we try and hold it down to about 350 grams per ton. Um, don't always succeed in that, where we get uh, relatively high grade coming through, so we're up to 500 grams per ton in areas. Um, and unlike most of PNG, we also have a, a tailing stem, so we have a very, very small environmental footprint. Um, treating uh, the core material, we've actually, uh, uh, last month, for instance, achieved 95% gold recovery, 94% copper recovery, um, and we're running at about those similar, similar recoveries right now. We are in the process of installing a gravity circuit. Um, Aruma Fimpa has no gravity gold, whereas Cora, about 50 to 60% of the gold is gravity recoverable. So we're installing a gravity circuit, which we believe will improve our recoveries further from where we're, uh, where we're sitting at present. So core we very much see as a three-stage development. The first stage was to get in, start mining it at the 50,000 ounces per annum. Um, and certainly that's, uh, that's the point at which we've achieved now. Um, our current, uh, current rate is actually above 50,000 ounces as of the last couple of months. Um, stage two is that expansion to 400,000 uh, tons per annum, which will give us about 120 to 130,000 ounces per annum. We carried out an initial PEA just on the Cora, without Cora North, and that was an extremely attractive project requiring a, an in, initial capital of only 15 million and uh, generating in excess of 300 million in, in NPV5. Now, we're updating that PEA, bringing in the Cora North resource as well, and we believe that will significantly improve uh, the financial uh, outcomes of that. 15 million very, very low capital, and that's uh, because the plant itself is uh, significantly over-engineered. 400,000 tons per annum, it only cost us about 5 million to actually expand the plant to that size. And then the third stage is really the underground exploration that we're busy with now and will continue with all through next year, which, uh, as I said, we've got a, we've got a target of uh, 5 million ounces from that area. Um, currently, we've got a bit over 2.5 million and we'll be uh, then doing a feasibility study on that extended resource. There's some of the, uh, the outcomes of the initial PEA, and as I said, we, uh, we're currently updating that. We've just, uh, we're just in the process comp of completing an updated uh, resource, which will be in excess of a million ounces, and that's being fed into a new PEA, which will be uh, out in about a month's time. 
So this is uh, some of the extension drilling we're doing beyond uh, the area that we're currently mining in and, and uh, the Norn Cora. And uh, here you can see the, the Cora vein and ML150 is our mining lease. Um, what's quite important here is that we know that the Cora vein actually extends approximately um, 1,000 meters outside of our mining lease and that is in our exploration grant. So we, uh, at this point in time, we anticipate starting to drill on that extension area. So that's outside of the five million ounces that, uh, that we're looking at within the mining lease. We anticipate starting drilling that in the first quarter of, uh, of next year, looking for an extension of that. Importantly also is that um, there are actually a number of parallel vein systems, one of which is the uh, Judd vein, which runs parallel to the, uh, the Cora vein. That vein has uh, been traced about two and a half kilometers. Um, very, very little drilling done on it. And some of the drilling that has been done uh, included uh, a best intersection of three meters at 278 grams per ton gold, 0.21% copper at nine meters at, uh, and nine meters at 8.3. So Judd, doesn't figure in right now any of the ounces that, uh, that we are talking about when we talk about a target of five million ounces. Um, but that parallel vein system sits approximately 200 meters to the east of, uh, of Cora. And all of the drill cutties that we've set up to drill Cora will also be able to turn around, drill the other way, and be able to drill out uh, Judd for, um, for the extensions in that as well. And then finally, looking at uh, our exploration, as I mentioned, uh, Barrick bought this from Highlands in 2007 for $141 million, $141.5 million. They did not buy it for the Kinantu mine, 200,000 ton per annum mine. It's not exactly a, a Barrick target. What they bought it for was the porphyry targets. And as you can see, we have uh, quite a number of porphyry targets within our exploration uh, leases. We've uh, just completed our first program of, uh, of drilling on the Yomposa target, which is to the south. Um, and we're looking to start drilling on our number one target, or at least number one target according to our uh, VP exploration, which is Blue Lake, which is a porphyry which uh, had not previously been identified. Um, so we're looking again first quarter next year to start a, a drilling program on that and then from there moving to the A1 headwater porphyry, which was considered by Barrick and, uh, and I guess ourselves as well as being the potential source of the Cora Aruma Fimpa uh, mineralization. It's basically directly a long strike from it. So we're looking to be drilling that one in the next quarter as well. In addition to which we've got multiple epithermal targets um, in it with the Rumafimpa Cora Judd, but also Karempi, Maniapi, Aracompa, Maniapi and Aracompa having had a historical resource, I think of 1.6 million ounces, um, never mind, um, and areas that will be in and, uh, and looking to drill next year. In terms of our guidance for 2018, production 42 to 46,000 ounces, and, and we're on target to, uh, to achieve that. Um, we've significantly expanded our mining fleet this year with three additional LHDs, two additional rigs, which takes us to five rigs now, and three, uh, three additional trucks either delivered or on order. As I mentioned, we're installing a gravity circuit. We've got an updated PEA on the expansion of the plant and mining, uh, and the mining capacity and a further update of the resource. We are continuing uh, an extended exploration program uh, aimed at really e extending the, the non-core mineralization and evaluating that Judd vein system. And uh, as I said, we've commenced drilling on our high priority porphyry targets and uh, that's scheduled to continue uh, well into next year. So that is uh, the K92 Gold Project, K92 Mining. Thank you for your time. We are uh, on booth 60, 92. F, not K, for some reason. Thank you.